We are back at the 50th annual Air Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo. It's Saturday Flight Live. Well, the live part we're not that thrilled with because it means a lot of work, but we're here doing cool things, crazy things with even crazier people. And I gotta tell you, my staff is stepping up today in ways. I will tell the story sometime, but I'm not sure I can tell this story until all the bodies are buried. We, we shall see. Let's talk Delta Hawk. All you right. guys kind of blew everybody away. <laughs> I mean, first of all, you did the first real, honest engine certification since God wore sneakers. <laughs> and then on top of it all, it, when you guys came down and visited me and allowed me to test fly your airplane for a few minutes, I had a great time. But I noticed on Flight Aware you guys were going to Vero Beach. Yes. I had a feeling something <laughs> sneaky was going on. Uh, tell me what's happening with Delta Hawk now that uh, mm. the, cat's out of the, the cat's out of the bag here. Yeah, so we... Uh, uh, Partnered with uh, Piper on their uh, uh, <coughs> PA44, their Seminole. So we uh, officially have signed an agreement that uh, we will be working with them on outfitting their airframes with uh, Delta Talk engines. Well, that's going to be a nice ride. Uh, yeah, it will be. A, a nice econo economical ride. You've, you've experienced it as well. So yeah. Well, the thing I like most about uh, flying in the SR20 was uh, even though there's a difference in horsepower, it wasn't noticeable. Correct. So uh, on, on top of that, uh, vibration at cruise and uh, especially in climb was on par with anything I'd felt previous. And everybody's kind of going, whoa. Don't diesels <laughs> rattle, rumble, rock and roll? Yeah, we. Uh, that is probably one of the biggest questions we're having uh, at uh, Sun and Fun is when people come to the booth, they're asking about vibration and and Send don't them my diesels. Way. Yeah, don't diesels uh, have that uh, history? And uh, well, we've done a lot to our engine to dampen all of that, so we uh, we understand it and we've addressed it. So uh, we. I, again, I've flown in it, and I can tell you that it is probably one of the smoother rides I've had in a long time, too. No, so, you guys did good, well, thank especially you. since, uh, I mean, I'm familiar with the SR-20. I've owned an SR-22. I'm familiar with what the bird does and uh, so forth, and uh, I think this is a big move up for them because, uh, more important right now, the Continentals aren't holding up in the field as well as they should. There's some issues out there. And uh, finding something new, especially new technology, is certainly the way to go. Yes. Yeah, we, we think so, too. So, um, uh, With luck, they'll take the hint. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate that. Uh, so a um, couple other things, right? We're working. We have the 180 horsepower is what you flew in. Uh, we are currently working on a 200 and a 235 on amended TC that was going to come at the... Uh, later this year so uh, same package we just uh, larger uh, turbocharger we need uh, more air and more fuel so uh, we're excited about that uh, everyone is asking uh, about our, our next uh, higher horsepower ev uh, engines and we had uh, uh, a lot of people asking even for smaller ones to this year so um, we we're contemplating all of that and we're looking smaller at in aviation isn't that sacrilegious <laughs> You would think so. Mo better, mo better, mo better. Every yeah, most people want more horsepower, but uh, I was surprised at how many people wanted less. So I'll be darned. Different applications. What was this hydrogen project that came up? We did a story on that recently. That's a real interesting deviation from norm. Yeah. So we uh, uh, looked at our, our technology and understood that uh, we potentially uh, we haven't. We haven't done it yet, but we believe we can, is uh, actually run on hydrogen. Um, so just a fuel system change, uh, but I think our engine would be happy on hydrogen. Uh, we got a lot of testing to do on that, but uh, again, we keep hearing about um, the no emissions, about uh, all of that, so we're trying to address it that way as well. So. Well, it's a novel project, that's for sure. Hydrogen is being talked about in the autonomous segment quite a bit. Uh, at the same time, they've got serious questions about delivery yeah. and so forth and so on. That's going to be the storage and yeah, you name correct. it. So more power to you if you can use it. Yes. But we shall see. Now, at the same time, you're working with some in the experimental community. Correct. And as I understand, you are destined for the RV-14 and Bushhawk. Yes. Okay. The, the, yes. Okay. So we, the RV-14 is uh, currently uh, being worked on. We have uh, the airframe 
at uh, Del Talk, and uh, we will be uh, hopefully at Oshkosh. You will be able to see the installation in RV14, and then the Bearhawk. The, the Bearhawk. Excuse yeah, me. No, oh, that's boy. fine. <laughs> the guys over there are going to shoot me. Uh, but we have a four place that we're working on as well. So, well, that's going to be uh, a wild project. Which four? Is there a specific four place you're willing to talk about, or uh, it's just the Bearhawk four place? Oh, okay. So, well, that ought to be oh, yeah. something. And uh, what are you looking at next? Excuse me. What are you looking at next? Well, obviously, we have the uh, Seminole that uh, I'm from the STC side of it. So uh, we believe once we uh, we can do the RV14, we believe the RV10 is uh, a perfect uh, candidate to uh, to expand on. And then, as you indicated, we'll see how the OEMs. Uh, accept this and and where we can go from there from a STC standpoint. This was a long process. You folks have been at this for an extraordinarily long time where most people would have quit, run out of money, <laughs> given up in disgust, uh, you know, sacrifice their firstborn, whatever it took to get to uh, a point of completion. But you got there. You, you are a certificated engine. Yes. Uh, what about that process? What did you, what have you learned from the process? Was it all necessary? Was it unnecessary? Was it something that ultimately matured you as a company? Uh, for sure, it has matured us, right? So um, we've learned a lot. Uh, we've made a lot of changes to the engine, right? So to get certification, it's uh, very difficult. Uh, we appreciate the fact that it's difficult because uh, the the. You know, once you're flying, you, you don't want to engine out. So um, we appreciate what we had to go through. Um, we did learn a lot. We made it as robust as we could. Uh, we are looking at a lot of redundancies within the within the engine. Um, so we, we we did learn a lot um, as a company itself. Uh, persistence. I, I'll tell you. Uh, that word, uh, I can't overemphasize uh, persistence uh, because you have to stick with it. Ins and insane persistence. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's a labor of love for, for the ownership as well. So they have uh, been able to uh, see the vision and uh, they've funded the vision. Uh, so, yeah. Wow. I, I, we've been following it, obviously. Uh, Aero News, since its inception, has followed a lot of projects many got, went by the wayside and bye-bye yeah. you know they're and especially in the diesel segment yep but you are the survivor yes we are at this point yes so you now have a production program to build and on top of that you have to get out to OEMs and see what you can do about getting them in the latest Piper latest Cessna latest whatever may be uh, interested at this point What's that process look like for you? So the PC or production cert certification uh, is going to come along with amended TC that we, we discussed. Um, the FAA would like to see us in uh, a production mode when they come and audit us and make sure that we are doing what we say we're doing uh, with all the documentation and processes that we have to, to put in place. Um, so it's a perfect time to do it. We are working with the FAA on that right now. So once we get amended TC, the plan is to also have a, our production certification at that time. So they don't like doing one-offs. It's difficult for them to uh, verify your process uh, and the robustness of it. So um, we're going to build multiple engines at the same time that we put one through uh, amended TC. So, yeah, that's uh, it's another process that we're going through this year. And then to your point about the OEMs, uh, it's... Uh, having contact with them, um, it, explaining our the benefits of our of our engine to them. Um, if you, if anybody who's listening, want to go to deltalk.com and uh, fill out our survey, uh, we have over 600 people that have filled it out. They have given us what airframes that they're interested in, and we're using that as we uh, have conversations with uh, with our OEMs. So uh, we're very interested in them. Uh, giving them the information to help us uh, along the way. So outstanding. What's the company look like? How how many people involved? What kind of facilities? Where are you at right now? Uh, so we're in Racine, Wisconsin. 
Uh, we own all of the IP out of Racine. Uh, we have 53 employees at, currently. Um, we have a production facility. We have uh, test facilities. So we have two prop dinos. We have a water break dino. We have a reverse dino. We have multiple uh, component uh, capabilities for testing. We also have a hangar uh, right on Batten uh, Airport, which is we our facility is adjacent to that. So it's uh, not too far away where we, we do all of the uh, package installations into these airframes. So um, we have, uh, I think we're robust and we uh, have the uh, facilities to be able to expand and to grow and to do what we say we're going to do. How big do you think this is going to be? Uh, great question. Boy, it, it would be nice if uh, it was... Uh, it, it would be in, in, incredible if it, if it exceeded all expectations. I think, uh, you know, with uh, Jet A and the Avgas situation, uh, I, I don't know. Beautiful. That's a great question. Great so. the For the person in the, in the future who is a Delta Hawk operator, and, and they're going from point A to point B, what's it going to look like? What, how, how different will a Delta Hawk-powered aircraft be in the field? So, again, the, the flight that uh, came to you, right, we did 818 nautical miles uh, without a fuel stop. Um, we had with reserves hour and a half reserves yet we believe we can fly a thousand nautical miles uh, on one tank of gas uh, or without refueling right um, our that's compared to 600 nautical miles that that you would get in a stock SR20 currently um, we don't have any mixture controls we uh, it's just it's power uh, you can control the, the your prop and and the power that's all you need to do. I, obviously, you experienced it. So, um, indeed. How easy do you feel it was? Uh, easy once you understood yeah. that the differentiation yeah. between conventional piston and the diesel. I mean, obviously, the startup sequence changes, and there's things that are quite different from the standard. Okay, let's prime this and do that, and you know, is it? Are we going to have to lean it out because it's a hot start, or yeah. whatever the case may be? The part that I thought was interesting, though, was how the airplane got crowded by the ground crew at, <laughs> uh, at Cecil Field because they hadn't seen anything like this before. They're all running around going, okay, Jedi, 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 yes. Jedi, let's get that in our head. And the one question they had was, okay, how are we going to be sure in the future that these things are fueled correctly? And obviously, you do what every pilot should do, which is supervise fueling. Yeah, yes. And we're, we're finding that, that uh, they have to get – they're not – allowed to have uh, Jet A into uh, uh, general aircraft. They have to get permission. Some of them have to uh, right, go to their uh, leadership to, to, to get a permission. We have to give that to them as well. So, yeah, I mean, when we're flying around, it's, uh, it's very novel. And to your point, uh, at all the uh, FBOs we've, we've landed to, everybody's come out and uh, wanted to take a look at, the, at a Jet A piston general aviation engine so it's it's been it's been exciting so well oh, they were they were all agog over there they're just everybody's they're they're out there with their iphones they're taking pictures yep. they're posing in front of the airplane they're pointing to the you know the, the uh, fuel warning and so forth yep. and the, the stickers yep. and the whole bit yep. it was kind of wild yep all right so our pilot and uh our uh amp our, our celebrities every everywhere they go so uh it's it's exciting they have to call in ahead of time to say this is you know we're doing this and it, we need jet a and again because the process takes a little bit so yeah well we thank you so much for spending time with us at saturday flight live we've had uh, such a great time this week working with you for so innovation preview and working with you previously and of course uh, being among the first to actually get a chance to sample the airplane in a little bit understanding the prototype and this that and the other but it was a really good indication of what we can expect from the future and we appreciate it well we appreciate everything you've done for us as well so thank you we just call them as we see them. <laughs> All right. If, if it wasn't working right now, you wouldn't be sitting next to me. You'd be throwing rocks at me from the side. Yeah, all right. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see what happens from here. All righty, folks. We are live from the Lakeland Linder International Airport. Absolutely. 
the 50th annual Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo. We're going to take a break. We're waiting on a guest right now. We will be back very shortly. We're live again. This is Saturday Flight Live. Thank you.